for once I would like a company to just be honest with their marketing material. I wish Intel would have come out and said yesterday and said, you know what? Our next chips have just eh, a little bit better AI performance. Wow. Please explain. I don't know. I don't. I, they probably do have bigger performance, but they compare it to the H100, which is now an older chip that's whatever. And Well, yeah. I Look, I, the harsh, well... All right, okay, to be let, the, the two sides of the coin now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be fair to Intel, and and to be fair to Intel, you have to take into account history. It's not the current regime's fault that this company followed the path they followed for so long, too long. I think we would all agree. Mm -hmm. And they're trying, right? Yep. Um, so you know their first gen ai <laughs> processors these ultra core ultra chipsets right I, I, they're okay mm -hmm. they're not great yeah. they're not like a huge leap forward right no. now despite this microsoft has banded together with its longtime partner slash nemesis and they've created this branding for ai pcs that Includes a co-pilot key in the keyboard, which I finally experienced, by the way, in a new laptop I'm reviewing. It's ridiculous. And an Intel Core processor, or Core Ultra processor, right? Uh, which has an integrated MPU GPU and CPU. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, so they're in a hybrid architecture. You know, they have, um, uh, what do they call them? Performance cores or performance cores, whatever the name is. Efficiency cores and then highly efficient cores, which... Uh, you know, depending on the situation, the the idea is that when not much is going on in your PC, it can shut everything down mm -hmm. and kind of run on a minimal uh, amount of hardware. This sounds great in theory. I can tell you, having reviewed, I think, three of these computers right now, and the fourth is in the house, not great. They're not great. Um, so the other side of the coin is that uh, Qualcomm has been doing this longer. Mm -hmm. um, their elite ex-elite chipsets which are not out yet I mean, to be fair that was the intel kind of exaggerated the time frame differences here as if these guys were somehow following them you know but uh is dramatically more powerful than the core ultra from an mpu perspective and then um amd amd's uh, not much better than intel right now frankly although they too are talking about this 3x improvement that will occur sometime this year so by the end of 2024 we're finally going to have three sets of processors families across all of the three major uh, silicon suppliers that uh, will be in the same rough ballpark i guess the problem is we don't have any of those things right now what we mm -hmm. have is a really lackluster intel chip we have a really lackluster uh, amd chipset from from an mpu perspective and we have nothing from qualcomm yet because the current gen stuff whatever that's called is garbage <laughs> so all of these companies could kind of position themselves however they want. Intel is talking three gens out. I mean, so I don't know if you're new to tech. I don't mean you, Brad, but I mean, like, you know, if, if onlookers are new to technology, but one of the maxims made uh, fun of in a Simpsons uh, episode from a million years ago is that uh, it's always going to get better in the future, you know? So whatever you buy now is crap. Uh, the next one's always better. And the one after that, oh, my God, you'll, you won't even recognize it. So yeah, neat. So by the end of the year, they'll get their shit together and they'll be able to compete with something that uh, Qualcomm announced last year. They're good, good for them. If you want to be cynical, I don't know. But then again, you know, like I said, Qualcomm's not here yet either. I'm just glad they're talking about it. I, there's a there is a nice <laughs> yeah, transparency to it that I like. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They're also, by the way, I I don't I'm not a hardware guy. But uh, to me, this was kind of a new bit of information. Like a lot of people have probably heard the term POPs, which is like trillion operations per second. Mm -hmm. It is a brute force method of measuring the performance of what we'll call AI, hardware accelerated AI, right? It's a, it's not the same as megahertz, but it's, it's, a, it, it's a measurement. And it's something that we'll probably dispense with in the near future as we move on to more sophisticated ways to rate these things. But to date, uh, TOPS, to me, has been something that we apply mostly to MPUs, right? Mm -hmm. Although, if, when you think about it, we're hardware accelerating AI, so a lot of that stuff, most of that stuff actually today happens on GPUs. So there must be, GPUs must have some form of a TOPS rating, although the nuance of this stuff is the problem, that 
the reason tops will go away is that it really is not a good way to measure anything because different workloads are more efficient on different chipsets and whatever. Um, but Intel, I, to, for the first time to my knowledge, uh, although I guess it's not the case, but I, I never noticed this before, is discussing tops in terms of both the overall chipset, meaning the CPU plus the GPU plus the MPU, as well as just the MPU, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I know. And I, I, again, not a hardware guy, but I have to be honest, I th there's some sense to it, although again, not nuanced enough, because it doesn't take into account such things as the the power draw of these processors compared to what, say, Qualcomm is doing, which is a big problem. Uh, the requirement of fans and noise mm -hmm. to accompany these workloads as they occur. Um, but anyway, the Intel chips have uh, the ones they were talking about, Arrow Lake, the next gen, um, the sec what we'll call the second gen Corel chipsets, will have uh, an overall TOPS rating of some number. And then the MPU specifically, and that's probably the GPU and the uh, CPU, will have individual top TOPS ratings as well, TOPS numbers or whatever. Look, this the thing. Here's the thing. This this is this is what blows my mind about this because I, I really obviously I care about this. This part of that Intel event yesterday mm -hmm. consumed possibly two minutes, Ooh. probably less. Right when they actually talked about Arrow Lake, the the actual bit about Arrow Lake was like a little tiny. There was one slide. He held up the chip. It was. I'm surprised he was able to hold it. It was like size of a fingernail. And that, and then there was an hour before that, and it was like an hour after that. But the thing, like I'm focusing on, and I think a lot of people are focusing on, I was like, what, what, what did you just say? <laughs> what was that little bit? You know, it's kind of it's it, so you know people care. They they generated news, right? Yeah, they did. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I know. Right, I know. I mean, There's so many mixed feelings about this. <laughs> well, the the other part of it too is we're missing half the story, which is the OS side, which we'll learn more about at build. Uh, I think yep. is when we'll expect to hear that. But right now, these companies are like, we have these AI NPUs to do whatever. And yeah. there's no, okay, what are you doing with them? It's like, ah, we can't tell you. Like, oh, okay. I mean, yeah. Qualcomm, there's... I guess, at your event showed a little bit, but it's not. Right. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I, I, I... I, this, this is going to be a hard sell. Um, the, the problem with AI is that it doesn't make for a good elevator pitch, right? It, it's, it's really hard to say concisely, this is why you want this thing, right? It's hard to point someone at something and say, see, mm -hmm. you want, you want that, right? You know, I don't think we're ever going to see a big consumer buying cycle again. Right. And I, 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 I don't, I don't think it changes the fundamental nature of the PC market in the sense that at some point you as a consumer need a new device and you either buy a windows pc or a mac or a chromebook or whatever you buy and you don't really think about it too much other than that right and so whenever somebody goes into a best buy or however they buy computers these days you look at what's available and you make your choice and then you use that thing for several years mm -hmm. and um you know that computer will be better than the one you replaced and that was always the case right i mean in many ways um it's just, I, I, you know, for, I, I'm going to get this number wrong. I think I said this to you the other day, but Qualcomm made the case that, you know, even something as basic as Windows Studio Effects, which is background blur and these kind of effects you can do, which requires an MPU. Uh, Microsoft ran tests on this. The reason it requires an MPU is because I'm, it's an order of magnitude more efficient on an MPU. And I'm like, this is the thing I, he said this and I listened and I, I'm me, so I forgot the exact number, but it is, the MPU is either 0 0.1 or 0.01% uh, the power draw off an MPU as it is off the CPU. Like it's an order of magnitude mm -hmm. difference. So to, to run this thing continually in the background, it's, it's like a, it's a persistent process that occurs because you're doing it live. It's real time. You're moving around, so it has to kind of, you know, it's not just a static thing. You could do it with a CPU, and you could do it with a GPU. It would just be a lot less efficient. So if you have the MPU, you're, you're basically getting it for free. You don't even notice the, you wouldn't notice a battery life difference or anything. 
So it's a freebie. Mm -hmm. It's like when Intel went from two cores to four cores. It was a freebie, right? It didn't impact battery life. It, did, it was great. Why would anyone buy a computer for that? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like it's, so there are, there are workloads there, depending on what you do. I don't know. I, on the Microsoft end, we, uh, there's uh, some hybrid co-pilot thing coming, which is going to be ludicrous at first. And we'll see over time. And there are some sets of features in windows that some of which will maybe be better with an MPU. Some may require an MPU. Uh, yeah. That's the thing you're talking about. Like we don't right. know yet. Like we don't, we don't know. And here's the other thing that's missing in that statement that you just said. Mm -hmm. So that that's great <clears throat> that it's more efficient. Super happy for anybody who's running a laptop that's not plugged in that needs background blur. Anybody who's got a plugged in device that's just, you know, a desktop PC. Yeah. Eh, like it. Yeah. So if you could, you could put a module between your power plug of the computer and the wall and you could measure the power draw and you could make a comparison between an MPU and a not MPU and a computer over a period of a month and say, yeah, I guess I could say, I, I guess by spending $1,800 on a new computer, I could save 17 cents a month. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, that's, it, it, it's a tough one, but I mean, I, I, the thing that I, I think know. would actually help drive know. adoption, which I'm sure we will see in some capacity, some way, mm -hmm. although I already have reservations about what I'm about to say, is they need to find a way to get this into the gaming world where for gamers who are typically <laughs> exposed to spending more money on hardware, saying like, look, yes. if you're running, we'll just say Grand Theft Auto 6 and you have a device yeah. with an NPU, you'll get 8 to 10 frames per second faster gameplay because you have an MPU. That would probably actually help them move yep. hardware. So, look, that will happen. Um, I'm sure it will. It, it will. And the... So many contrary ideas here. I, I, I remember um, in the early days of Apple and Steve Jobs coming back to Apple, rather, and uh, they, would, they would put two computers up on stage. It would be like a Mac and a PC, and they would run some Photoshop thing, and it would be like... Yep. Bloop, 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 bloop. And they like, look, the G3 is, you know, X, whatever. And it was because Adobe did all these optimizations for that chipset and blah, blah, blah. It wasn't, it wasn't that the Intel thing couldn't do it. It's just mm -hmm. what it wasn't at the time, whatever. So, you know, back then, um, that was what a computer was. Like, that was personal computing. So that mattered, right? And so if you were like a Photoshop guy in that case, you'd be like, oh, my God, I got to use a Mac because it's so much better. And it was, right? It was, you know, it made sense. They're going to do the same thing. They do do the same thing. We're going to see these. At Qualcomm, you go to Qualcomm's uh, YouTube channel. You can see all the side by sides. So it's like, oh my god, look how much faster it is. And you're like, yeah, but it's, but, yeah, but it's like, I, yeah, to an average person, like there's these people on my site right now debating, which is this, it's astonishing. It's 2024, and they're like, web apps aren't real apps, you know, blah blah blah. They they don't, they don't feel as fast. They're not as efficient. They can't do this, that, and the other thing. And you know, my wife and normal people are like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm just using an app. And I don't, they don't know what, how these apps are made of care and, and they all work fine, you know? And so most people aren't using stable diffusion to latch onto our individual moving in the frame of a video or whatever those things are. I, I just told Nickel two things, it doesn't matter. Most people are just like, I run uh, Word and Chrome and <clears throat> that might be all they do, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And these things seem to work fine and I don't care, you know? And if it takes two seconds longer to boot up the one time I have to reboot my computer this week, it doesn't impact me. So, and plus, by the way, we do everything on phones now. So who gives a crap? I, you know, right. so it's, it's how they market this and the effectiveness of that are remain to be seen. I, I'm, I'm very curious. Um, I don't know, for people like you and me, do video editing, maybe coding, um, image editing whatever these kind of high-end things are that most people don't do i maybe yeah i mean yeah i mean i we've always gravitated toward these kind of premium computers that are better in some way you know mm -hmm. i'll tell you you know what we'll sell a computer dude i i've been using this macbook air for the past almost three weeks now and it's it's wonderful it's a beautiful computer right it's, it's like the, it's thinner than a pencil it doesn't have any fans it's silent never gets hot it work does everything i needed to do perfectly well it never hitches or pauses or screws up or blats or bleeps it doesn't make any sense and then i get this i don't want to throw anybody out of a bus but i mean again this intel chips like they're not great so you get this brand new computer from another company <laughs> in the pc space and it has an intel core ultra chipset in it and i have to set that thing up like i do all my computers you know and so we're, we're my wife and i are watching tv the other night i got this thing it's doing the automated um 
uh, Winget based uh, mm -hmm. app install thing that I do. So it's, you know, it's just installing apps like that. And then it has to reboot. And when it reboots, it installs a firmware update. And that thing, dude, it was like being in a plane without wearing headphones. It was like, yep. You know, and, you know, we're sitting there in the dark and my wife looks over at me and she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, it's just updating. The, I don't know. I'm sorry. You know, and it's not fair, but uh, to, to recast it more of a Windows light, the dream, the hope, I think the reality is that we're going to have these Qualcomm based PCs that will do what the MacBook does, but running mm -hmm. Windows, right? And uh, th there's an, you don't, you can't say there's no appeal to this. Uh, that might, when you go to upgrade and you, you're like, windows pc chromebook or mac that could make the difference that that's a big deal so you may not give a crap about ai or that stuff efficiency silence and that super thin form factor mm -hmm. maybe you know maybe or yep. maybe not or maybe not <laughs> my mom has no idea what arm is <laughs>